Hello everyone! Have you ever imagined the world without communication? I cannot. And that is the reason why we are going to discuss today what communication is, its nature, processes, and the different elements involved in the process of communication. But before we start our lesson, let us first know what are the objectives or the expectations that we have to meet after the discussion of this topic. The following objectives are the goals for this lesson. Define communication. Explain the process and nature of communication. And identify the components of communication process. First up, the nature of communication. Communication came from the two Latin word communis, which means common, and communicare, which means to share. Communication by nature is both a system and a process. You cannot identify a scenario or a situation as communication unless it follows certain processes or certain steps that could lead to eventually or gradually proper or appropriate communication. In addition, as defined by businessdictionary.com, communication is a two-way process in which participants reach a certain level of mutual understanding, wherein it is not just about exchanging information, opinion, and news by encoding and decoding. Rather, it is reaching a certain level wherein you are creating and sharing mutual meanings we should also remember that communication is not just about what you have said or what has been said communication also involves different facial expressions gestures and reactions this nonverbal things can also communicate something and that is also something that could add meaning to communication for successful communication to occur, people should have something in common when it comes to language, knowledge, interest, experience, and culture. There should be at least one similar language among the people communicating. If not, there will be a barrier. Thus, communication will not transpire. Just like in the example, Ricky speaks German and Rudy speaks in Spanish. Next is knowledge. Knowledge regarding a certain topic or idea can cause either communication or miscommunication, just like in the following example. Next comes interest. If you have the same level of interest with somebody that you are speaking or communicating, it will cause endless or continuous um, communication between the both of you. Having similar experiences with the person that we are conversing with means we can relate with each other. Thus, we are familiar with the things that he or she is going through. Thus, communication can transpire. And last but not the least, to be able to achieve successful communication is the most diverse of them all, culture. And when we say culture in communication, it needs to be the same or somewhat similar when it comes to the level of understanding to facilitate comprehension of the message being transmitted. Now that we are aware of the different factors that should have something in common for successful communication to transpire, we should have a hint that communication is in almost everything that we do. Communication is existence in almost every part of our daily lives. But the main question here is, why, why, why? Why should we study communication? The reasons are, first, to understand ourselves as a social being. Second, to gain a professional competence. Third, to understand ourselves as a person. And the last, but not the least, is to preserve 
cultural values. So why do we need to study communication? The answer is simple. Communication is something that helps us improve, develop, and understand ourselves. In addition, communication also helps us to connect with the external. And when I say external, it is something to do with our community, our society, and our culture. Let us now proceed to the characteristics of communication. Communication involves at least two persons, somebody who is talking and somebody who is listening. Number two, it may be written just like in letters and books, oral just like in oral communication or with gestures. Number three, motivates a response. This is the feedback. Number four, it may be formal or informal depending upon the situation or scenario. Number five, it is a two-way process. Number six, it must have a message because if it does not, what is the purpose of communicating? Number seven, it flows up and down and side to side, meaning to say it encompasses everything that is within the process of communication. And number eight, it is an integral part of the process of exchange. Now that we are aware with the characteristics of communication, let us proceed to the elements. This diagram shows the process of communication. In this part, we are going to define and give the function of each of the following elements. The first element is the context. And when we say context, it is the situation, the setting, or the environment. We should always remember that any activity is affected by the context in which it occurs. The second element is the speaker. It is also called as the sender, the encoder, or the source. When we say sender, it is somebody who is conveying the message or the information. He is also the one that initiates the conversation. We should always remember that a sender is using combination of verbal and nonverbal um, symbols and signages for the information to be sent effectively. The third element is one of the most essential part or element of communication, which is the message. The message is the key element that is transmitted in the process of communication. The message could be in written form, in symbolic, nonverbal, such as body gestures, silence, sigh, a different facial expressions, and others. We should always remember that communication will never take place unless there is a message. And the fourth element is the channel. And when we say channel, this refers to the pathway through which the message travel in order to reach the destination. Meaning to say, a message was sent from the speaker to the receiver through a channel. And the fifth element is, of course, the receiver. The receiver is the one who is responsible to listening and decoding the message of the speaker. And the last element of communication is the feedback when we say feedback this is the return process of the communication that completes the loop of the process so feedback is the reaction of the receiver towards the message of the sender but the sender can also send feedback when the receiver sends a feedback so a feedback results to a feedback this image was shown earlier. This includes the process of communication. The last part of this video includes the process of communication. So the process of communication starts when the sender thinks of an idea or a thought that he or she wants to convey. The process of thinking of an idea or a thought that the person wants to convey is called encoding. After the process of encoding, the message will be sent or transmitted to the receiver via channel. And then after that, the receiver will receive the message. Upon receiving the message, 
the receiver will then decode the information meaning to say he or she will be giving his or her own interpretation of the message after decoding the receiver will then send a feedback so the feedback would go to the sender upon receiving the feedback the sender could also send another feedback and the last circle pointing to the sender the channel and the receiver is the oh wait wait See you on the next video. Bye!